let's find out what happened in your worlds. Um, and I know um, from the composition of the group that um, it has not been it's not been great for all of us. My condolences to those, and I will not individually um, um, identify those um, those people um, that have lost loved ones um, to um, to COVID. But um, we think of you, we pray for you, um, and and hopefully, um, yeah, we'll get through this together. Um, but um, welcome back. Uh, for the start of this um, semester. Welcome back to a new module, which, um, yeah, hopefully not like the previous group. They didn't know they have this module. They didn't know that, <laughs> that the, the textbook wasn't on the on the book list at the start of the year. Hopefully you guys have, are, are better prepared. Um, but um, today's session for me, um, primarily um, because we are dealing in 40 minute sessions today, is to say, Welcome back. Let's see what the vibe is. Who is with us and who's not? Um, what has happened? Where are you in your lives? Um, and then specifically today, I'll also deal with um, with assignment one, which is due in quite well, six weeks. But um, um, just to give you an idea of of of, of what to expect. But um, How's everybody been doing? I mean, anybody can, uh, there's no particular order. I'm not going to identify everybody, but I'm just going to to welcome you all. Um, but um, individually, you are more than welcome to share anything that has happened in your life. Um, we've got a joint Centurion um, Balba group here. Um, don't worry, I'll take attendance. Um, I haven't forgotten about that. How's the surf, Tarquin? Have been able to go out there? I know that um, the weather's been, pfft, let's rather say the caption the weather's been unpredictable and let's leave it at that. <laughs> right, I understand the situation. Thank you very much. Um, my son was also, um, showed some symptoms. We had him tested. Fortunately, it was negative. Um, but then I also spoke to a colleague of mine who said that um, her daughter was also um, tested twice, negative, um, and within five days after the last negative test, it was positive. People, this is the times we live in. It's it's just the only thing that we're sure about is is that <laughs> that's going to be a surprise every day. And just as you think that you've actually conquered everything, then Eskom says, you know what? We've just taken 14 years to build a new general um, 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 station. Um, that cost us four times more than we actually, oh no, not four times, more than four times, more than we initially anticipated. And then we decided in the first week just to start, just to add some, um, 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 just just to make some fun. Let's just blow it up. Um, you know what, really? Uh, anyway, um, anybody, a lot of, as I said in, initially, um, a lot has happened since we spoke. Andre, Sean, um, Tarquin, everybody, um, um Brody, welcome back everybody. Um anything that you want to add just to get the ball rolling. Um I just wanted to be nice and informal and have a chat to everybody to see what the vibe is. Um yeah. uh, Yaku, I just I hope that you give us the questions to the to the turn test this time. <laughs> Last time we didn't <laughs> <laughs> now happy to be uh I've, i'm quite excited to see that it's you again i didn't realize you're going to be our lecturer so welcome how was the operation how's your it was your leg hey, or your arm yeah i'm good and, and i had some reconstruction in my upper jaw as well so i'm I'm all fine now. i can smile and the irony is now i have to identify the mask <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah that's it's all good um spirit is good uh, and that's important that get, that gets us a long way and you know what i watched something on the weekends um that that was very inspiring and if any of you have who's heard of gary player I mean, I know it's before many of you, but I mean, if you haven't heard of Gary Player, then really, um, I'm going to. Oh, okay. Um, those who have not heard of Gary Player, you'll immediately lose five marks um, on your first. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, you know me. I'm not like that. <laughs> um, 
Gary Player is a South African golfer um, who is one of um, what they call the big three, um, where Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus and um, all the big four, we can, they, they include, based on a number of majors, one um, Tiger Woods as well. Um, he's 85 years old. Um, he's a South African born Joburg Boyke. Dad was, um, was a miner. Yes, he worked eight kilometers below the ground, and he lost his mother at the age of nine. He started playing golf at the age of 14. He turned pro at 17, and he's won tournaments in seven decades. People, none of us are older. We, we haven't even reached seven decades, and he won tournaments in seven decades. Absolutely amazing. Nine um, master, um, 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 major tournaments. Um, for people who are into sport, um, it's like winning the Champions League um, five, six, seven times. It's like um, winning Wimbledon and the French Open um, three or four, five times. It's like uh, winning gold at the Olympics for three Olympics running. It's um, in his case, it would be seven Olympics running because it's over seven decades. No, it's even more than um, um, seven Olympics because that happens every four years, and a decade is ten. Um, and I, I was so inspired by just um, how this, the positivity that this individual, um, um, he, he recently lost his wife um, of more than 60 years, uh, I think, um, to cancer. Um, and how inspiring he is. And, um, and just if you, if you listen to the story and, and how positive he is um, about everything, then it's just, you know, it's, it's hard to remain negative for longer than five minutes. Um, if 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 you listen to that, um, and that's the kind of thing that um, I would like to share with us. We are a very small group, or not a very small group. We are 14 students for the semester, which is nice between Belvin and Cape Town and and Centurion. Which means that with the time that we have, and the fact that we are not as rushed at this as the start of the first semester, um, I'm 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 convinced that we will have. A, um, because we've conquered the first semester, uh, because the changing system was um, similar for you, or uh, how you've experienced it was uh, was similar to us. As a matter of fact, for you, it was easier um, because you didn't know the old system. We had to convert to a new system, um, and that that takes time. So um, there were a few mistakes made, um, and and to be honest with you, I feel much better prepared and ready to offer the quality of um, of delivery that um, I want to, and I think that you guys are entitled to, uh, for using that word, which I hate. Um, but for the quality of delivery that you expect, uh, and that we as Stadio want to um, be known for and want to offer. Um, it's it's been a tough six months because it's been a tough six months and we've challenged ourselves on many levels it has become much easier now and therefore i feel more confident and and better prepared for the second semester um and you know what the one thing um, is is um the one thing about challenges is that um only once you challenge that um you know what you're capable of um if, if you don't push the boundaries all the time if you don't challenge yourself all the time you don't get better you just become pleasant um, and yeah uh, but yeah having said that um, I'm very positive with, with uh, uh, at the start of the semester um, I would uh, and we've all gone through different challenges and we haven't spoke to each other for quite a long time as a matter of fact somebody said to me yesterday um, are you are you anxious about the second semester so no I can't wait because I've missed the students um, and, and we've all missed that. I mean, it's the exam times is never an easy time because I mean, you you're going to be judged by your results, and, and nothing else matters. And you sort of lose focus on on the bigger picture. Um, and it's always it's always I would like to I would like us as a group to maintain the level of enthusiasm that we all have at the start of the semester um, throughout. It's going to be difficult because my time management has just gone for. Uh, 40 minute lectures. I'm 100% in favor of the 40 minute sessions, but um, it just makes planning so much more difficult because um, 
we've got five minutes between <laughs> the one period and the next period. And our students are in the waiting room already for the next period, and you're still busy with the previous one. <sighs> you know what? We'll get around. Um, there are there are people with, or well, um, yeah, there are people who have much more to, to be concerned about than me getting from one period to another and you going from one period to another. So the same applies to both. The five minute break is not just for us, it's also for you. So it's similar again. And we'll deal with it. Um, but yeah, having having said enough already, um, how's everybody doing? Um, I've heard from Andre and um, Parkman has given me a couple of thumbs ups. Um, he's not been able to surf. Uh, for some reason, I understand why. Uh, it's not just uh, related to the surfing conditions, but um, how's everybody doing? Teresa, how are you doing? <laughs> Guys, let's talk. Let's not just type the whole time. I'm going to not even open that option. Let's chat to each other. Let's chat more to each other. That's important. Good. Thanks, Teresa. Great to hear that you're good. What do you mean break, uh, Tarquin? Um, a break is something that that yeah yeah. Break, no, you can break an egg, but <laughs> <laughs> we're still like in holiday as well. Like when like when we went on our semester break, or we're still working straight through. Ah, I was working straight through, <laughs> but I do it with a smile. Um, um, somebody asked me. I went to the dentist um, last week. Um, or was it? Um, I was. I can't recall. Last week, yesterday. I mean, I, I sort of because that's not one of the things on your on your wish list that you or your bucket list. That you sort of. Oh, I'd like to go to the dentist. Oh, I mean, just I just look forward to it. None of us look forward to going to the dentist. Now, anyway, first question the dentist asked me when I was lying on my back there, and they usually know that you actually have to be honest and, because. They've got you right there um, on your back. Um, are you workaholic? And I said, what do you mean? Well, how define workaholic. Um, if you do something that you enjoy and you're doing it um, for most um, hours in a day, um, yeah, I suppose I am. And then also if you have been unemployed um, for two years after being employed for your entire life, then – you want to work. You don't want to break. Um, actually, but um, Darkwin, yeah, having said that, um, I, I did take off a day or so. Um, I, I intended to take off the long weekend, and then they changed some templates um, <laughs> um, on Friday, and I just had to copy and paste and, and, and add them to new ones. But that, that's just par for the course. I mean, this is, this is the game we're in. So I'm happy. Um, I'm happy that I'm doing something every day um, that I enjoy, um, and I think that in itself it it it, um, it, it doesn't seem like work then, um, and and it sometimes uh, requires that you therefore then don't have to necessarily take a official break. But um, I've been in this game for 25 odd years, um, and as a result of that, I know that. You're really the only break that you really have is when when a college or university is closed um, formally, and that is um, for that two week period in December. Um, and then, even if you want to work, there's nobody that can help you because they're all on break. But um, no, it's all been good, um, and and um, uh, I got better in, at, at 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 time management and and managing my time better. Um, so yeah, we continued working throughout, but um, it just was done at uh, um, at an adjusted pace. Let me put it that way. Anybody else? Anybody? Nobody won the lotto, or, or I suppose those who won the lotto are probably not joining the session. Um, they are probably living life of luxury somewhere. Uh, I know that none of you have won Olympic medals because South Africa have not won uh, enough medals at all. Um, but it's, um, I think it's a reflection um, of of, of um, the challenges that um, everybody has experienced um, over the 
of the last 18 months. Um, it's it's been difficult. I think for athletes, professional athletes, um, it's difficult. Playing field wasn't really level um, um, at the Olympics. I, I was one of those who were dead set against it a week or two before the start of it and said, in the times that we're in, not really a good idea, um, especially because Tokyo just went into a uh, um, state of emergency. And then I realized, you know what, um, and I'm one of the first ones to admit after the Olympics are finished, is that we actually enjoyed it. It was necessary. It was for us. It was an, it was an escape. It was, it gave us opportunities to um, to be f um, filled with hope again. Um, and that's important. Um, you, there's a lot of things that once, once hope is lost, um, yeah, um, the whole battle is lost. Um, but now, in general, it's all been good. Um, thanks for everybody has joined today. Um, as I said, um, it was just a nice introduction and get to um, pick up some loose ends on where we were and where we um, since we um, since we last chatted. Um, I am going to spend some time now because I have to manage my time very well. I want to finish today's session. Uh, um, I've got until quarter past. Um, by just introducing you to the assignment and, and just giving you sort of a background what to expect. Because I always know that the briefing of the assignment is very important at the start of the semester, but then also um, some of it is not really that relevant to you at the moment because you haven't done the work yet. Um, but I've structured uh, the assignment in such a way that um, you can see there on the screen that um, it's due on the 7th of, of September. Um, I think it's quite a nice and enjoyable one. Um, personal selling, um, per se, it basically will cover over a period of 15 chapters all the different steps in the selling cycle. It starts with you preparing um, what, you are, what are you going to say when you make that phone call to a prospect? Where are you going to find your prospects in the first place? Right up to the point where you are closing the sale and then following up to see if the customer is happy. That that basically is the is, is the um, the golden thread um, throughout this course. We're going to go through all those different um, through all those different steps in the selling cycle, chapter by chapter. And I think most importantly, and we'll spend the entire next week on that. Is the chapter? Uh, I think it's chapter two. Let me just check it. Chapter three on communication because we've got verbal communication, non-verbal communication, and then written communication, and all of them. Um, combined is, is extremely um, important to be efficient in selling. You cannot just be uh, a good salesperson and, and a smooth talker and the admin needs to be up to that as well. Um, and, and I think also very importantly, and, and we'll probably do that when we resume again tomorrow and on Friday, um, is that um, the perception that we have about selling, the perception traditionally that exists of people in sales. Um, you know what? You don't know what you're going to do. You don't have any idea what career you sort of follow. So go into sales because everybody can sell. Um, and we are going to also break down that perception, which is so far from the truth. Not everybody can sell. Although we sell every day. You go for a job interview, you are selling. You're going out to a bar, you socialize. You're trying to sell yourself to that girl, that boy, that whatever. Um, and and, and it's, it's we are always selling ourselves. We are trying to, um, and, and that's what's in human nature. So, I mean, because of that, people have always um, or easily assumed that it's, 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 it's easy for us to sell a product or a particular service on behalf of a particular company. Uh, which is not. So we'll be dealing specifically with skills that's necessary and essential for you to be successful in sales as an part of the introduction to what personal selling is, which is just one element of the marketing mix, the way in which the one of, it's just one of the methods that is used to um, to market the products of your company to um, a group of consumers. Right, the, the reason why I wanted to discuss this um, um, assignment with you today is because, um, and I'm not going to go through all the details of the general instructions, that's on Canvas, it's on there. Um, I just want to highlight one thing, I mean, if, there's, if, if you have been on Canvas, and I saw that some of you were already, 
um, you'll see that on the assignment it says it's available until the 22nd of September. Although I say on the previous page, um, the due date is the 17th. On Canvas it shows it's available until the 22nd of September. Let me qualify that. The assignment is due on the 17th of September. That's a Friday. Okay, Friday just before the long weekend. For those who've forgotten that there's a long weekend in September as well. Um, the 17th is a Friday, but because we have a late submission policy, which says you can submit late, one day minus 10 marks, two days minus 20 marks, three days minus 30 marks, after that zero. So that's why we've kept it open and it's available. So you can, you, you have to submit by the 17th, but you can submit until the 22nd. If you submit on the 22nd, you immediately will lose 30 marks or 30% of your marks. Okay, so that's just the reason why the submission date as well as and, and, and the um, available date might show differently on Canvas. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that um, with you. So I'm going to jump straight into the assignment. Now, the reason why I want to spend some time on this particular page, because there's no point in going through all the different questions if you don't really understand the work yet, is to say, right, let's get a, just, let's get a feel for what we want you to do in this assignment. Now, anybody, give me an indication, just a raise of hand, um, Remax, is that a familiar um, brand to you? In retail, they're one of those companies who sell houses. I know that a lot of you have not. Thank you, Tarquin. Right, looks like a it's it's a familiar. Thank you, Sean. It's 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 a familiar brand to um, um to a lot of people. Um, now, not too many people know that Remax is actually an American company. It's an American real estate um, company who actually um, has um, a presence in South Africa. They didn't start in South Africa. It's not a local company. It's an international retail company um, who originated in America and who are represented in, in quite a number of countries, 100 plus countries, and South Africa is one of them. So what we've, for this particular case study, um, what I've decided to do is to say, right, because it's a familiar brand to a majority of people, uh, and to most people in the um, the housing environment, um, let's sketch a situation where you, as a you, you yourselves, we know that that houses are sold by estate agents. So let's assume, and some people refer to them as as, as estate brokers or uh, property brokers or um, sales consultants. You are basically selling a house. That's what it is, regardless of what your title is. So for this particular assignment, we have decided to select an area, um, Somerset West in the Western Cape, um, and um, that's part of the discussion today. I'm going to give you a geographical um, um, a lesson as to exactly where it is, just to help you to understand the environment in which this particular business operates and maybe help you better with selling. And for the rest, um, there's Google. Right, Somerset West, is situated um, about 50 kilometers um, on 50 kilometers south east on the into um, just before you get to the mountain range um, if you're on your way from um, from Cape Town to George um, or the Garden Route. Okay, so if you take the South African coastline from Cape Town, you'll take the coastline straight east um, and it's about a 50 k's um, you find it on the border it's it's still within the cape metropole um, which also includes Stellenbosch uh, which is about 15 kilometers away from um, from from Somerset West and it has become the most uh, fastest growing area for commercial and residential um, um, property in, in in the Western Cape. That's why we've chosen it. Um, the background to that is to understand that because it's fast growing, it means that a lot of people want to stay there 
a lot of businesses want to open um, their businesses in that particular area. Um, and therefore, it might be a very lucrative area for you as an um, estate agent or a real estate sales consultant to operate in. Um, that's just some background on on um, on the um, on the brand itself. The questions you'll see is quite simple and straightforward. You are going to, uh, and we'll do that. I'm not sure if we'll do it this week still, but uh, definitely next week. The different steps in the selling process. Um, you are going to recommend which ones you are going to follow because you have just now started as a sales consultant with Remax in Somerset West at the um, at their branch in Somerset West. Um, and you'll see as we progress through the course um, how all of these questions um, become more clear to you, obviously. But in essence, what we would like you to do is um, to obviously identify those steps and apply those steps specifically to Remax, to your situation. Because the similar steps that will be followed by you as a sales consultant um, in real estate will be followed for somebody who's selling Toyota vehicles, for somebody who's selling uh, different products, representing different companies and different brands. What I've also included in, um, in two of the questions is that because we find ourselves in the COVID, um, the COVID pandemic, it's not something that we can hide. Traditionally, there are specific methods that have been followed to sell. Certain skills were required. If you watch the video clip um, or the movie, the founder, um, Ray Kroc, McDonald's, he had those uh, that that mixer in the back of the car of, of his of his of his car in the boot. He went door to door. He knocked on doors of businesses, of restaurants, um, trying to sell it. That's how it was done traditionally. It's not the case anymore. We have to social distance. There are certain restrictions as a result of COVID. So the whole process of selling has changed. And some of the methods had to be modified for um, the current situation that we find ourselves in. It wasn't something that just sort of, and I almost sort of in hindsight thought that, you know what? Um, maybe I just, this morning I was thinking and I was putting a few thoughts on paper and I thought, you know what? If we haven't progressed technologically to where we are at the moment and where we were last year when the pandemic hit us, what would we have done? We would have been, because imagine the pandemic came in 1992, just before um, 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 internet hit the globe. It would have been total confusion. How do we do? How do we cope? How do we? Because we now at least we there is a platform available for us. So what we have, um, what I've included in this assignment is just to say, you know what? We know the textbook tells us what are the traditional methods and techniques that we have used to sell in in in, in the past. How do we have to model? Do we have to? And and which ones do we? Which ones do we keep? exactly the same as they were pre-COVID, and which ones do we have to change, and how do they change? Okay, so those are just, um, it, it requires you to actually access Google, go onto the um, um, internet, and, and do some what we call desktop research. That's what question two and question four requires you to do. I said, do some desktop research. Desktop research means go onto a computer, your phone, your tablet, whatever, um, access um, the internet uh, and find more information about the specific topic. There are many. I tell you what, there are pages and pages once you actually um, start the whole process. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail in discussing a particular question. Because of the size of our group, I would like to say, and let me just quickly grab my notepad here and... Um, 
on a Friday we have um, we have one period on a Friday. I think we might even for at least the first number of weeks because of the size of our group and the um, workload we have to complete. Um, I can safely say that Friday, mm, Friday we have the first and the fourth period. Yes, you're quite right. Um, Friday we have the first and the fourth period. I think we can use the fourth period on a Friday just to summarize the week and engage in a in a um, discussion on how we are progressing with the questions as we progress through the work um, and the questions become relevant and we can discuss it. Let's discuss the questions as we progress through the first number of weeks um, to allow you to um, to, um, to to do your assignment um, in most efficiently. Um, anybody at this stage, any anything that you want to contribute, anything that you, uh, any questions that you might have specifically? Who's been who's been on Canvas? Who've seen uh, the assignment? Okay, anybody based on, on Tarkin's feedback that uh, it's first time he saw it, um, and I'm waiting for um, the one to um, also have, um, first time that they've seen the assignment. Um, I would like to, um, any questions that you guys have? I mean, is, is it clear? Is it, um, I know that you will have more questions once you've, once you've gone through the assignment and you've read all the questions, um, and as I said, some of it won't be relevant to you at the moment because we haven't done the work yet. Um, I just wanted to, you to understand what the, the concept of the assignment is, is about, and, and that is that you are a sales consultant, and we are going to, um, and you're a sales consultant that has been employed at this real estate company, Remax, internationally known, based in a specific geographical area in South Africa, Somerset West in the Western Cape, um, and that everything that follows um, is going to um, to apply to that, um, because the questions itself uh, it's, it's it's not it's not difficult, and and the whole module. People, if I have to write this module um, to the previous one that we that we did um, in in business marketing in the first semester. Um, it's a much easier module. Definitely, without a doubt, it's a much easier module. And um, and um, I think you'll deal with it quite well. The, um, we'll want to do the questions that we need to do the desktop research on is question 1.3. Do desktop research to identify five ways on how to adapt the sales process during COVID? ensure that you correctly reference that's basically um just you um, make sure that you capture the reference okay so it's question 1.3 uh, and question 2.2 do desktop research and identify six ways to prospect effectively during COVID. remember in the past when you're prospecting prospecting means when you go out and you find new customers or potential customers there's different ways. You can go to expos. You can stand on a street corner. You can phone people um, from the from the yellow pages or a phone directory. Um, there are different ways of press prospecting, and there's a whole chapter that will um, um, that that, that will um, that will deal with prospecting. I think it's chapter. Let me just make hundred percent sure. Prospecting is, is is chapter six in your textbooks. Um, but some of those avenues have closed for us because of COVID and we cannot use those methods to to find new customers. And we want you to do the research, go onto Google, find ways, find articles that have identified different ways of finding prospects. Um, question 1.3 and question 2.2, therefore for your desktop referencing. 
pleasure, Lawanda. Okay, any other questions? I'm going to just go to the next page because I want to finish off here. When we do the referencing for it, I want you to include in your reference list, in your bibliography, at least one internet source, at least one textbook, and at least one academic journal or article. Okay, there's blogs and all kinds of um, different um, sources of information on, on the internet, people. Um, okay, so just make sure that when you go through your assignment that you pay attention to point number six as well. You're going to get two marks for referencing if you do not have at least one of those. Can you see? One mark, one mark, one mark. That's three marks out of the total five that you lose if you do not have those specific resources. Okay, because sometimes people just give me five textbooks. Okay, that's great, fantastic. But I want you to use a variety of resources. Okay, at this point, people, just to summarize, that's your assignment for the semester. Um, it's not a difficult one. We will continuously throughout the uh, semester, and uh, I suggest on a Friday that um, that fourth period we have at, at two o'clock. No, I'm not sure if it's, no, it's not the uh, fourth period on a Friday. Yeah, it is 10.20, 10.20 to 11 o'clock. Let's just summarize the week and um, because we have enough time to get through the, 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 the curriculum and then also discuss our assignments. Let's bring the work, let's bring our progress to the class and chat about um, what we're doing. So by the time you actually hit that submission button on the 17th of September, we're going to get top quality work. My grading is going to be easy and your results are going to be great. Anybody um, want to add anything before um, I finish off? Nothing in the chat um, or verbally? During our, thanks, Taco, during our, <laughs> thanks, Taco, um, during our lecture on chapter three, communication, we are not going to do any written communication. We're not going to do any chats. We are going to talk because part of selling is at some point you'll have to meet the customer and you have to talk to them, even if it's not in person because of COVID restrictions, even if it is in a Zoom call or in a Teams meeting. But you have to put a face to the name of the customer before the deal gets signed off. OK, so in when we do Chapter 3, we're not going to be chatting in Teams. We're going to be talking. You don't have to switch on your video. But, but you don't want to see me when I'm doing an online session. But um, um, yeah, so at least I can smile now, but I have to hide it behind a mask. But um, we will communicate because you have to practice all forms of communication to be successful in sales. And verbal communication is one of them. I thank you. If nobody has anything to add for today, I'll stop the recording. I'll upload the session um, later on this afternoon. It will be available on, on, on Canvas. Um, go have a look. I'm going to check. Um, I've taken attendance, don't worry. Um, and I'll update the attendance register on Canvas as well. Okay. Thanks very much. If nobody has anything to add, um, I bet you fare well. And we chat again. Let me just confirm before we close. We see each other again tomorrow for the third period, if I'm correct, at 9.35. Is that good? Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Tarquin, Andre, all of you, Teresa, everybody, Brody, everybody has been part of the session. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening or oh, rest of the day. Um, stay safe. Make good decisions. We'll chat again tomorrow.